Now it's time to go over some finance. We're going to talk about compound interest, and we're going to use this equation. I just want to start off by showing this awesome joke here. This is i. You know the square root of uh, negative 1? Did you know that's called i? And then we have 2 cubed, which is 8. And then, of course, this is sum. Get it? I eat some pie. All right, so you have $5,000. I just want to show you an example first that sort of gets us thinking about this. Now, you take this money. You set it in a fund. We'll talk about the word appreciate later. You'll see that uh, over here we're going to actually have the, that word appreciate. Okay? Uh, it appreciates at a value of 7% per year, compounded once a year. The question is, how much do you have after three years? One really simple way to do it is to say, well, after one year, I have, let's see, I have 5,000. Now, what a lot of people want to do is they want to add, or they want to first calculate 7%. So 7% is actually 0 0.07. You can always just do, I mean, it's 7 over 100. If you speak French, for example, I like it. It's literally 7% pour cent. Pour cent means like, you know, over 100. So you take your 0 0.07, you would multiply that by 5,000. You get the amount and you'd have to add that. Well, if you add something to something, that's like adding 100%. So you could actually say, you know, plus 100%. Wouldn't that be 1.07? Because 100% is just 1. So it turns out, this is a nice little trick for this. Instead of saying, you know, times 0 0.07, then adding it to it, you could just say 5,000 times 1.07. You can just say it just like that. Let me get out a calculator to see what that gives me. So I'll go to a new calculator here. I'll say 5,000 times 1.07. Now I have an answer of 5350. So that's the amount of money I have after that first uh, year. Now we're talking about compounding, we'll talk about that later. But uh, for right now, let's just stick to this. That's the amount of money you have after one year, right? Because it's uh, gone up by 7%. Well, after two years, you'd have to take that 5350 and you would multiply that by 1.07. Now I want to show you a better way to do it though. Okay, so keep in mind, there's there's a better way. Or you could say it's the original amount you did, you multiply it by 1.07, and then you multiply that answer by 1.07, because it's like you've done it twice. Isn't this cleverer? It'll be the same, you'll see. It actually gives the same answer. So I can take that answer right there and then multiply that by 1.07. I end up with an answer now of uh, 5724.5. Okay. 5724.5. All right, now what? I keep going one more time, obviously. So uh, it's going to be 5724.5. Oops, like this right here. Times 1.07. Right? Or I could have said it's 5000 times 1.07 times 1.07. Oops, my writing's getting really bad, huh? times 1.07. There we go. Let's see what I get then. I'm just trying to make sure my writing is somewhat clear. So if I do this right here, I multiply that answer by 1.07, and then I have my answer. It's 6125.22. That's the amount of money I have here. 6125.22. That's my amount. Now, do you notice, though, what we could have done? We could have seen this kind of like, do you notice this looks like an initial amount, like 5,000, and it looks like we're always multiplying by 1.07, but we're always raising it to some power n, where n is 1 or 2 or 3. Doesn't this kind of look geometric? That's sort of the idea here. We're, you know, This is actually related to geometric, because uh, it's something where we have a rate, we have something with n's, although uh, geometric normally goes n minus 1. It all depends on how you start your n's, but there we go. That's the idea behind it. Well, let's see now if we can actually, uh, I mean, we have a formula for this, right? This is... This is a, the, the formula, right? It goes un equals u1 times r to the n minus 1, normally. So this kind of looks geometric. We're going to have an actual formula to use um, in a second here. I'll show you that. Uh, it's a simpler version of this. Before we do that, uh, I think it helps to know a few definitions. So we're going to do, uh, by the way, I like this. <laughs> Remember when air was free? Now it's 150. You know what? Inflation. Because we have this term here. So we have interest. Interest rate. Uh, that's when you borrow money, you have to pay interest. This is like, this topic is great because it's real life math. You know, a lot of people say, when will I ever use this? This is actually stuff you might use. So for example, if you want to borrow money from a bank, a bank is going to charge you some interest. Interest is some, is some percent that they want to charge you, some percent of the amount owing, or there's all sorts of ways to doing it. Uh, 
If you invest money or earn money in some way, you earn interest. So maybe you, you know, it goes up by that. And this whole idea about going up or down, that's this idea of appreciation versus depreciation. So it goes up in value, something, if it does, then it appreciates, like an investment. If it depreciates, it goes down in value. And a good example of that is like a car. If you buy a car, not every car, but a lot of cars, most of them, when you buy them, they're worth a lot less money the second you roll it off a lot, you know, if it's brand new, for example. So they just go down in value. Compounding periods... This is how often you're going to recalculate this interest. You're going to calculate, in other words, here, do you notice I did everything, I calculated everything once a year? I might calculate more often or less often. It all depends on what your compounding periods are. So there's a few of them that we need to know. So for example, if it's compounded yearly, we have monthly, because you could do it monthly. You could do it biannually. That's what we tend to call, I guess, biannually. We also have quarterly. Those are some of the main ones, at least. Uh, you could do it, I guess, daily. You can even do it continuously. That We have something that's actually related to this uh, number E, this uh, exponential. But, uh, okay, so yearly. That means it's done just one time per year. See that once per year. Monthly is done 12 times per year. Biannually is done two times per year. And quarterly is done four because that's what a quarter is. so we do it four times per year and inflation this is something that really happens in the everyday world um, a lot of times the money that let's say let's say you have a job and you want to buy something like i don't know some bananas or something well you know have you ever heard like you know your parents or your grandparents talking about like back in my day bananas only cost blah 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 but now they cost way more yeah that's inflation that's what this is inflation is where things end up costing more over time but sometimes the problem is maybe your pay doesn't go up with inflation. So then, you know, if, if that happens, then your purchasing power decreases because maybe you earn the same amount of money per hour or per day or per whatever, you know. But if the cost of everything goes up, but you don't get paid more, do you see your money is, is kind of worth less? So that's what inflation is. It's not very good for the consumers. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and do this one. I love this one because this is... This one actually really makes me laugh this t-shirt because it's interesting. It's all about interest. <laughs> so we have a formula in our formula booklet. That one actually really makes me happy. We have something called FV, which is future value. We have PV, which is present value. So it's like how much something is worth now, how much is it worth later, N is the number of years. K is the compound periods per year. We just talked about those ones. These are all the different values of K. These are your K values here. And R is your nominal annual interest rate. It's just how much interest they charge each year. And this is just how often they calculate that. So we have an equation for it, so you don't have to memorize it. You just look it up. And it looks kind of like it's very similar to this one, in fact. So it's a future value equals present value times. Remember, I was sort of setting it up a little bit like a geometric. You have something times something to a power of something. Well, we're going to figure out how we get the 1.07. Watch carefully. Here we do 1 plus, do you see that gets us 100% there? Now we have to have some sort of rate somehow, so this is r over 100k. All that is to the power of, what's that, kn. Is that right? Yeah. There we go, there's our equation. So we do not have to memorize this, we just look it up. We just have to know how to use it. And good news in our formula book, that actually even tells us all of these variables and what they're meaning. So we just have this 100K because it depends on how many you're doing per year. And our example before, we were doing it once per year. So this was R over 100. That's what gave us our you know rate value. Do you notice it was a 1? Do you notice if this one right here, if I made, let me just show you. So if, you know, uh, K equals 1. So in other words, compound, you know, it's once per year, like we just saw. Look at our example we just saw. FV, uh, future value, becomes present value times 1 plus the rate over 100. And all that to the power of N. And your rate over 100, you know, plus 1, that's how we got our 1. That was like our 1.07 that we just had before. So it sort of illustrates it actually quite beautifully. And that's sort of related to this one, although they define their variables slightly differently. Let's use a real example. Whoops, uh, let me just go over here and actually I just realized I need to fix this little K here. I don't know what happened to it. There we go. Whoops. KN. So if I do this one right here, uh, let's actually do a practical example. I thought it'd be fun to think about, you know, being a millionaire because people like to think about that. 
I certainly wouldn't mind. So I want to be a millionaire. I want to have a, a million dollars in my account, US or Canadian, it doesn't, well, I'd rather US, I guess, they're worth more than Canadian dollars. But let's say I want to have a million in my bank account in 30 years. So if I invest it, so this we can talk a little bit about investing. It all depends when you invest. You can play stock markets and you know there's all these you know index funds. It's crazy how many different kinds there are. Let's just pretend you invest in something and it increases at a rate of 7%. Some of them actually do. And it's compounded monthly. How much do I need to invest now in order to have a million? Well, the key is to start uh, looking at what are the different variables going to be. Like what are each different letter? So this 7.1, I hope you can see that's my R. So R is just 7.1. See that? We just got to go through all of our different variables, right? So let's go through um, compounded monthly. What does it mean to be monthly? That means K is 12, because I do it 12 times per year. N is 30, because I want 30 years. Now the question is, is this a million? Is that the future value or the present value? Well, think about now implies present, so I want... I want PV. This must be FV. That's the future value. Do you see? We've kind of just solved it. All you have to do then on an exam, if you really want to do this, just, I like to actually just show the equation first. This shows the person who's marking it. You know what you're doing, right? R over 100K, all that to the KN. I think it's how it goes. Yeah. So I just do this. So I'll put in my uh, values here. This is very clear then to what you're doing, I hope. So you'll see then I have a million. And six zeros equals PV, which I don't know, times uh, one plus, let's see, R is 7.1 over 100 times 12, all that to the power of 12 times 30. So you could actually sit there and, I mean, we can simplify it, I suppose, a little bit more. I just want to show you, because there's a lot of ways now of solving this, okay? I just want to show you some ways we can do this. So this is 7.1, 100 times 12 is 1,200. This is to the power of 12 times 30 is 360. I'm kind of done with the limits of what I can do in my head. I don't know about you, maybe you're better than me, but uh, that's about as far as I go. All right, so now what? I can use my calculator. You can use your calculator to figure out this, you know, and then you can, you know, uh, so you could say then that PV equals... Like, how's this? There's a lot of ways of doing this. My whole point is it doesn't matter how you do it from here. As long as you can use your calculator to get an answer, it doesn't matter. For example, some people like to call this X and then go ahead and solve it. There's a lot of ways of doing it, right? So you just basically find PV. There's a ton of ways of doing it. Uh, like I said, you can actually calculate this, right? You can actually sit there and go, okay, let's, let's do it. Let's do uh, uh, 1 plus in brackets. I'll just show you this. So, so 7.1 over 1,200. I take my answer. I do that whole thing to the power of 360. I do that. And now I do a million divided by that answer because I want to get what PV is. I'd have to divide by that. And I get some big number. Right? I get 119,586. So 119,586. 119,586. That means that if I invested right now, you know, $119,586, you know, and I did nothing to it, I just left it there, then in 30 years it'll be worth a million. So, I mean, it's gone up by almost times 10. So that's the beauty of compound interest, that things work better. It's not just that it's, just, it's going up 7% total. It can double or triple or times 10 in this case. There's another way to do it. I just want to show you a few different methods. If you have a TI Inspire or a TI 84, you have these numerical solving ways. I just want to show you, you can also do, um, maybe I'll just do it like this. I'll just show you this method right here. I'll use, I like using n solve. So I would do uh, n solve, that's this numerical solve, because I'm only expecting one answer. So I'll write it out. I do a million equals, and I can even call it PV. I can even call it that times. I'll actually put all this in. Actually, I'll put this all in my calculator just like this. It's a good idea to just show what you're doing, right? And don't forget when you use nsolve, you have to put a comma and put the letter you're solving for, so comma PV. Let me see if I can do that, just to show you how you could have actually done the whole thing all in one go. If I go to menu and I go to algebra and I go to nsolve, I put in my whole darn equation. So one million equals, 
I have a little equal sign there, which is nice. I'll call this thing PV. I'm not sure if it lets me just do it like that. We'll have to see. I think it does. Times open bracket. And I'll just do one plus. So I'm just doing it one more time like this. I'm just writing this whole thing. I'm just trying to show you there's a lot of ways of doing it, and it doesn't matter how you get there. All that matters is that you get there somehow. Don't forget comma. I'm going to try to solve for this thing called a PV. Let me see if it does it, if it allows me to have it. Yep, yeah, good. So you could even have left it as a PV. You could cut all X. It, it didn't matter, right? So you notice then this is how much I have to have. Now, in real life, this is actually kind of a lousy way to invest. You should always be adding more money to it like once a month. So there's, there's cleverer ways to do it, but this is just at least how it would work. And why would you care? Well, knowing about how money works, like you know, loans, paying off debt, investing, that's maybe the most useful thing you'll ever learn in mathematics. You know, a lot of people say like, oh, I wish I learned something useful in math. Here it is. 